In this chapter, we'll take a closer look at switching and routing. These are important components in having a network run smoothly. A switch is a communication device that connects other network devices. A switch receives and forwards data to its specified destination within a LAN. A router is a communication device that connects computer networks. A router also receives and forwards data through the internet. Before we go on, let's briefly review how data gets packaged so that it can be sent to and received where you want it to. Data is broken up into datagrams that are placed in a packet, which is then placed in a frame. The frame contains the sender's MAC address and the destination. The packet contains the IP address. Think of a time that you got a letter in the mail. The letter was inside an envelope. The envelope showed the address of the person that sent you the letter. It also showed your street address and your zip code. Data traveling over your network is like the letter in the envelope. The street address is like the MAC address and the zip code is like the IP address, while the letter itself is the data. A switch forwarding messages in a local area network, or LAN, is similar to mailing a letter to your friend across the neighborhood. The local post office can keep the letter in the local area and deliver it for you according to the street address, just like a switch uses a MAC address. If you want to send a letter to someone across the country, the local post office looks at the zip code and sends it to a distribution center, which then forwards it to the correct zip code. The distribution center is like a router sending packets through the internet. Just like every house has its own unique address, every device that connects to a network, whether wired or wireless, has a unique identifier called a Media Access Control Address, or MAC address. The MAC address is a 48-bit number separated into six two-byte numbers. The first 24 bits represent the device manufacturer. In this example, 18-66-DA represents Dell Inc. The last 24 bits are a random sequential number assigned by the manufacturer to ensure that each device has a unique MAC address. When referencing the OSI model, a MAC address is a layer 2 address and the data that traverses the wire is called a frame. The switch keeps track of the MAC address to which it's connected. Inside every switch is a table of MAC addresses and the port the device is plugged into. This is called the MAC address table. As data traverses the switch, it builds this table based on the frames passing through it. This process continues until all devices connected to the switch are accounted for and the MAC address table is complete. When the MAC address table is complete, the switch can send data directly to the appropriate end device since the table defines which port each device is connected to. It's also important to know that switches are full duplex devices. This means they can send and receive data simultaneously. This, along with the data separation by port, means that the chance of an Ethernet collision is reduced significantly and speed and efficiency are increased. Switches are classified as either unmanaged or managed. An unmanaged switch is fast, less expensive, and can connect to all of the devices in a small area, like a home or small office. In situations that require a larger network, a managed switch is preferable. Managed switches usually have a web-based or command line interface that lets you configure how the switch functions. For example, a switch's configuration tools let you create and manage virtual LANs or VLANs. VLANs allow you to create local area networks based on categories other than physical proximity to each other, such as segmenting your network into accounting, sales, and production. Segmenting the network in this way can reduce the broadcast traffic, which can increase traffic speed and increase security. Managed switches also support link aggregation, which provides the option to combine multiple switch ports in parallel to increase total available bandwidth. This is often used when connecting to devices with multiple NICs that provide things like file and storage services. You can also configure a switch for port security. This lets you define things like which devices and how many can be attached to a single port. Most organizations used managed switches because they can be configured and provide better security. In your efforts to have your network run seamlessly, you'll likely need to employ multiple switches throughout a building. This comes from the Ethernet specifications that require a maximum distance of 100 meters between a switch and its endpoints. This assumes there are no breaks in the connection, such as wall plates or a patch panel. Wiring closets placed throughout a building can help meet this specification. Normally, an access level switch is placed in the wiring closet to connect, 
a system that's configured for VLANs, port security, and voice over IP. Depending on the number of connections you have, you could deploy multiple switches for this. These switches are then connected to an upstream switch that's usually faster and more efficient. Often, the connections between the upstream switch and access switches are fiber optic, which doesn't have the same distance limitations as a twisted pair of Ethernet cables. Fiber optic connections are also much faster than twisted pair Ethernet connections. Earlier, we discussed the difference between switches and routers. Switches come in two types, layer two and layer three. Layer two switches operate at the second layer of the OSI model, which is the data link layer. This means the switch understands the connected end device's MAC addresses. At this level, the data transmission is within frames. The port used to send data to an end device is determined by that device's MAC address. A layer three switch has all the capabilities of a layer two switch, but it operates at the third layer of the OSI model, the network layer, in the same way a router does. A layer three switch can even perform some of the same actions as a router, such as limited IP routing. A layer three switch works at both layer two and layer three, and supports only Ethernet interfaces with limited routing to LANs and VLANs. Layer 3 switches process and forward packets. A router works only at Layer 3 of the OSI model and can support many different types of interfaces. Routers handle advanced routing protocols and functionality. Layer 3 switches are mostly used for internal networks, while routers are used for connections in a WAN environment. Layer 2 switches, Layer 3 switches, and routers can all be used together in a large network. For example, here we have multiple VLANs connected to Layer 2 switches that are connected to a Layer 3 switch, which may also have some VLANs connected to it. Then the Layer 3 switch is connected to a router. The router is connected to the internet in a WAN interface. This is just an example of how switches can provide your network with optimal security, functionality, and speed. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we discussed how data is sent to the right place, the difference between unmanaged and managed switches, and some functions of Layer 2 and Layer 3 switches. Finding the best combination of features can help you keep your network running so well that people using it won't even think about it.